Welcome back, Leaders of Learning, and episode 80. Wow, this is unbelievable, and I have a, a really great guest to boot. We've uh, had this podcast interview and episode scheduled for a while. I'm so glad to finally be here with you. I have Hans Apple, who uh, I'm excited to speak to. He's an educator. He is an author, a podcaster. He does so many things, wears so many hats, but uh, we're going to talk about all that stuff in a minute. Before we do, Hans, welcome to the show. Please introduce yourself and tell us how you're doing. Dan, I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be here with you, finally having this conversation, like you say. Um, yeah, I, I always love that question of what do you do? I, I, I really feel like my why informs my what. So I'll just tell you my why is that I believe education at its highest level is about inspiring others to discover and develop their joy. And so for the past 19 years, I've worked as a counselor uh, at a middle school. Uh, I love middle school kids. That's, that's where my heart is. I'm, they're crazy and fun and uh, messy, and it's, it's awesome. So middle school is where, where it's at for me. Um, and then on top of that, I'm the director of culture for the Teach Better team. And as you mentioned, I'm a new uh, author. So I, I recently had a book come out called Award Winning Culture. So I'm super pumped about that and happy to be here talking with you. Yeah, and we definitely share that passion for middle school. I'm in, or I just finished up year 14, and I've spent all but about three weeks of that as a middle school educator. The three weeks were as an interim assistant principal at the high school level, but everything else has been at a middle school. So um, I think we're crazy for enjoying middle school as much as we do, but hey. That, that's what we do. Um, and at first, I, I want to start with that, actually. I know you, you do lots of things, and I do want to talk to you about them. But I want to start with that aspect of you as an educator, which is that you were a counselor. In 80 episodes of this podcast, this is actually the first time I've, I, I'm speaking to uh, an active school counselor. And so uh, I'm both excited uh, and, and intrigued and interested to hear how you answer this question. I guess I don't even know how to phrase it. Like, what's the deal with the school closures and social emotional learning? Like, what what's happening with students? Uh, what happened at the end of this school year in terms of schools being shut down? And then, what are we seeing and hearing and thinking about maybe what schools are going to look like? You know, as as we get through the end of this summer and into next school year and beyond, maybe. Man, that's a big question, right? <laughs> there's there's so much going on. Um, and I think we're all, as educators, trying to wrap our brains around what it all means and what it all looks like. The reality is, though, as a school counselor, I see kids on a daily basis struggling with anxiety. And that that's pre-COVID. You know, I, I would say anxiety rates over the last maybe four or five years are just off the charts. So now you, you add this new layer, right, where we've been out of school um, and, and dealing with, you know, all of the things that have happened over the last few months, and uh, it's just amplified everything. So, you know, the, the year ended for us. Obviously, we were still at home, um, and so there was a lot of my day that was spent connecting with students, reaching out, doing Zooms, you know, by phone, email, you know, anything that I could do to, to kind of stay connected, right? Handing out lunches sometimes during the day, um, whatever, whatever was uh, a way to reach kids. And, but, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, Dan, I didn't feel like I was, you know, that great of a counselor. And, and I, I feel like that's probably the response. A lot of educators are kind of like, you know, feeling yeah, like you know, the honestly, last few months. As like, you say that, you know, I'm thinking, I don't know that I was as good an instructional coach as, as I usually am and could be in person too. So I totally understand. Yeah. It's just, it, it's hard to adjust and you know, you, you just don't, you do what you can, but at the same time you feel like you're not doing everything that your kids need. Right. So I think a lot of what we're kind of doing here at the end of the spring and, and just kind of finishing up our school year and wrapping things up, planning for next year, we're expecting some sort of hybrid model. So we're thinking that, um, you know, it'll probably be some remote learning, but also some in school. And you know about me, I'm super passionate about school culture and really helping kids feel safe and welcome and warm and, and all of that. And, and that's where the challenge lies is, you know, how do you, how do you go about building those relationships in these, uh, you know, crazy times? So, I mean, that's 
a lot of my day right now is spent, you know, trying to figure out how can we do that? How can we build culture in classes? How can we build school-wide culture, right? Where we're still like all centered on making kindness normal and, and you know, what we're all about as far as we're the wildcats. So we're, we call ourselves wildcat nation um, and kind of like looking up to these three pillars of character, excellence, and community. How do those play out um, in these weird hybrid times? So it's a challenge um, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, whether it's in person, hybrid, uh, all distanced, you know, I think uh, in general, it's about maintaining those connections with students, um, maintaining that that community that you can as best you can. And really, and I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of a layup here uh, or an alley-oop. I don't know if you're a basketball fan. Maybe it's an alley-oop. I'm setting you up. So it all comes back to the culture, right? Now, um, you're all about culture, your podcast, your book, award-winning culture. Um, I, I guess just tell us about that, you know, kind of the origin story of how award-winning culture came to be. Yeah, so um, maybe five or six years ago, we started um, – having different school leaders and districts reaching out to us um, because they wanted to know why we were having so much success with some of the programs, some of the SEL programs and PBS type, type programs. We were having kind of a different experience than what they were having. And can, so, I, can I ask you, what, is, what does that mean? Like when you say you were having a different experience, yeah. I, guess, I, I guess I'm wondering how do you measure that kind of success with SEL programs, like you said, where it was working better for your school than other schools. Yeah. So, I mean, certainly you can look at all the regular metrics, right? Like um, grades and test scores and discipline and attendance and all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, teacher retention rates, all those kinds of things seem to be different. Um, and you know, what happened is some of these districts kind of started going, okay, well, we want to come see. And so this kind of led to some different site visits. Um, where, you know, people were coming on campus with full teams, basically wanting to take tours and, and you know, talk to us and, and kind of find out what's the secret sauce at Enterprise. And it was amazing how it didn't take more than them walking into the, the building before they were starting to reflect and go, wow, it just feels different here. So just to give you an idea, Dan, we start every day with uh, greeting every single person that walks in the door. So, you know, there's fist bumps and high fives and music, and it's just the place to be. And we literally, like, know everyone that's walking in. So, that, you know, there's these inside jokes and there's, like, greetings and compliments. And so you can imagine as an outside, you know, district bringing in maybe eight, ten people, they walk into this scene of just positivity, right? And, and immediately that just, like, triggers something where they're like, okay, this place is different. So me as the counselor, my wife actually works, Jennifer is uh, the leadership teacher at our school. And so we have kind of a big part in, uh, I guess you could say the culture and, and what's been built there. So we started getting specific questions, both during these visits, as well as like afterwards, kind of the follow-up piece. And the more questions we got, the more we tried to sort of tease out, yeah, what is the, sp the special thing here? Because you know, Dan, when you're in a school, you, it's, you're just in it. Like you don't, you don't really necessarily think about, well, is it any different here? Or, you know, what's going on? Um, and so that really forced us to kind of do that deep dive and try to tease that out. That sort of led to some speaking engagements and some blogging and writing where we began to go, okay, it really is these big things, these character, excellence, and community. So when we think about character, it's, will you do the right thing? Um, excellence being, will you do your very best? and community being, what will you do for others today? So those three questions really sort of guide our school and have become our brand. That's great. And, uh, you know, obviously, as I said a few minutes ago, extremely important, not just in person, uh, but amidst school closures and when we've all been at a distance from one another. I mean, we're really uh, almost getting to be halfway into the summer at this point, uh, but it's still, I'm assuming for you as well as me and, and my school and, and the culture that we've built, like it's on everybody's minds. Um, recently, our governor came out and said that schools will be back in session, full-time, uh, in-person instruction. And, and uh, we, you know, the teachers, the teachers union, we all have our, our doubts and our 
questions that are up in the air about like how is that even going to happen but the bottom line is uh, whether you're in person whether it's full-time whether it's a hybrid model model or whether everyone is still at home for the next several months uh, the key and I've seen this all over social media and I've heard it so many times uh, the key really is that the blessing in disguise here uh, amidst all of this has been the fact that people and even parents at home who are now having to play a bigger role in educating their children understand the power of those connections and that culture that exists at school would you agree with that yeah for sure i think it's it's really given you know families some perspective right on on um you know what it's like to be an educator and so that's that's been that's been an interesting process for for them to be kind of forced into that role but um you know now you know it's how do we help those parents you know really do some of the things like you alluded to sel for instance you know how do we, how do we support those same kinds of uh experiences at home right and i think that's that's a big challenge um we're finding that you know it is a lot of like you know the check-in uh with students you know the the taking care of ourselves as the adults um and you know really really having that lens of okay there's there's obvious equity you know concerns and issues and how do we eliminate those barriers so we can really get down to supporting kids um so there's there's lots of little layers that i think have been revealed certainly one of them being um parents are experiencing education firsthand yeah and uh i did it too you know i was uh definitely one of those where i was trying to help my own kids learning at home at the same time i mean i don't have classroom responsibilities and students of my own at this point but uh you know, trying to support and coach the teachers through it. And it was like I was trying to provide social emotional support for them because uh, obviously first time for everybody doing that kind of distance learning. It wasn't necessarily the first time for me. Uh, I've gone through now a, an entire master's and an entire doctorate program completely online. Um, so I think in a lot of ways I was maybe pre better prepared to support my teachers because of that. But, um, you know, talking about all this culture stuff, I, I have to take that natural segue into asking you about, of course, the new book and the podcast and everything that comes with your brand award-winning culture. Um, it's, it's really new, the book. I haven't gotten my hands on it. So if maybe you can explain a little bit about uh, what to expect when listeners and readers can get their hands on the book, I'd appreciate that. For sure, yeah. The, the book was really written for um, you know all educators to really help them create these incredible uh, environments within their sphere. What I found, Dan, is that most of the literature out there on school culture was written from a very specific lens. It was really a building principal, maybe a superintendent, um, but it didn't necessarily apply outside of the folks that had the title of leader. And so I really wanted something that a teacher, a principal, a counselor, anybody could pick up and instantly impact their own uh, culture, whether it's in their office, their classroom, or the entire school. So um, it's kind of broken down into four sections. I, I mentioned character, excellence, community. Those are all acronyms. Um, and so they break out into different things. And I, I tease out everything from how do you implement SEL to, you know, how do you budget specifically for uh, school culture? How do you empower and, and uh, create voice and choice within your school? So there's all these little elements that really play into empowering students and empowering our, our educators. And then the book kind of wraps up with what I call cultural maximizers. So these are other things that sort of get beneath those, those key pillars, character excellence community, and really support everything else. So, um, one of the key cultural maximizers that um, I think has been instrumental for me and certainly for our school is something I call um, educational cross training. So it's the idea, Dan, that um, it, for, for, in order for me to really grow, I need to step outside of just the counseling world. And so I need to learn uh, skills as a teacher. I need to learn skills as a leader, like a you know, traditional principal might have. Um, even like customer service type things that maybe some of our front office staff um, are working through. And so it's really kind of like a detailed plan about, uh, you know, how to, how to grow, right? How, how to improve uh, professionally. 
Here's what I love about that because uh, you know listeners who who listen to this show regularly will know that I end every episode by saying that no matter who you are or where you are, you too can be a leader of learning. And I feel like that mission and the mission of your book and your brand award-winning culture have that alignment in the, in the sense that, like you said, a lot of times, and, and look, I know some of the, the big names out there who have written books and make a living off of speaking about school culture and their messages are great, but I, I do agree that uh, it does come usually from someone who has that that very specific lens of having that prototypical uh, leadership title. And, and I'm really big, and this show and this brand is really big on the fact that anybody can be a leader. And, and it sounds like you're big on the fact that anybody can contribute to a positive school culture and improving a school culture that might need improving. Um, and so I, I guess what I'm wondering is, you know, take your average teacher leader, let's say a uh, classroom teacher, maybe like me, an instructional coach, someone who doesn't have a traditional leadership title. Uh, what are some of the things that they might be able to do to the, to support that kind of, uh, you know, culture building? Well, I'll just take you for instance, Dan, in, in your role, um, I'm super passionate about SEL, you know, character development, social emotional learning. But I think one of the biggest problems that schools have is that they talk about it a lot. They, they do a lot of talking like this is a good idea, but they don't actually put kids in a position to practice those things. So you and I beforehand, Dan, we're talking a little bit about student led podcasting. I'm huge into that. One of the things that, that we created at our school was uh, a podcast where our students could talk to experts around the world and you know really chew on things like mental health or you know leadership or character development or whatever the topic is and then after the interview they would have time to reflect and, and we call it a debrief and then share that out obviously that that you know creates an authentic audience where our community and certainly beyond our our um, state uh, can check out and, and see our podcast but I think that's the kind of thing that I would love to see happening in all schools, not necessarily just a podcast, but the idea of how do we take a social emotional learning experience and actually put kids in that spot to like practice and work through these things. So I, it's been so impactful, you know, for us to have the opportunity to, you know, put some of our leaders in a role where they could wrestle with big ideas like, you know, self harm and anxiety and, depression and you know what it's like to you know deal with parent rules and and you know all these just like really like you know big trigger uh topics that middle schoolers or we're, we're obviously middle school want uh, to focus on and want to talk about and then sharing those out so that their peers and, and parents and, and obviously staff and things can learn from their experiences it's interesting to me, and, and I'm not disagreeing with you, or, or I'm not, you know, saying I'm disappointed. But it is interesting that when I ask you a question about teacher leaders, you go to how stu how much students can uh, get involved in leadership, and really, they're the ones potentially who are driving uh, the culture shifts and the culture building in, in a school. I don't think that's a coincidence that you went there, but I think that's uh, that's interesting because. I'll be honest, you know, when I think of building a culture in a, in a school, I don't necessarily go to, to students first. I probably should. Um, you know, I, I definitely value student voice and choice. Um, I'm a little disconnected from students in my role as an instructional coach. I shouldn't say that. I'm a little more distanced from students in my role a, a, than I would be as a classroom teacher. Uh, but still, there are things that I can do and that I do uh, in my role to bring students in as leaders in the building. So I, I really appreciate that. It's it's kind of food for thought for me. Uh, you know, when we get back to school, how might I be able to do that more even? Well, and in, in your role, maybe it's even empowering some of those teachers to then empower kids, right? Uh, it's been amazing to watch. Um, you know, I, I think back to what you said a few minutes ago about, you know, we're all leaders and, and, you know, I, I think there's that's still a struggle for a lot of educators to wrestle with. Like, I'm a leader. You, I'm not the building principal. How could I be a leader? You know, but I, I, th I think it's 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 more there than it used to be. But now I think it's that next step of, you know, we have an entire school of leaders. I mean, that's the reality. Anybody that has 
somebody else that you know is in their circle right whether it's a friend a family member you know if they have any influence on another human being they're essentially a leader so if you think about it that's almost everybody in the world and i i sometimes don't think that kids you know feel like they have that much influence over their experience at school but the reality is they do you know uh so much of what you say is so interesting and like i said before aligning with uh, what I'm doing here on the podcast. It's not even out yet at the time of this recording, but in our last episode with Vernon Wright, who is an amazing leader in and of himself, uh, he mentioned influence. And the title of the of the episode is The Importance of Influence. And so again, I don't think it's it's a coincidence that you're bringing this up again. And, you know, think about it. I'm, I'm talking directly to my listeners now at this point, think about it, what Hans just said, that you have an entire school full of leaders. I say every week or every two weeks when these episodes come out, no matter who you are or where you are, well, that doesn't even mean that you need to be an educator. That doesn't mean that you need to be an adult in your building. It could be the students in your building. And I'm thinking about that differently now as well. So Hans, I really appreciate you saying that. Um, as we as we wrap up here, uh, you know, let's let's talk about well, let's plug the book some more. Let's plug the podcast some more. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about that, where people can find that, how uh how they access it and also how they access you as well. Yeah, so our, our student led podcast, um, as well as uh my wife and I, Jennifer have uh, another podcast that's all about school culture, as well as the book. All of that is available on awardwinningculture.com. That's our website. Uh, The book is also on Amazon and Barnes & Noble as well. Um, And so but that's the best place to to reach us. Um, And then I'm pretty active on Twitter and Instagram, and my handle is Hans N. Apple. That's great, man. You know, congratulations again on the release of the book. I know it's still a little early on, but, uh, you know, actually tell our listeners, you said before that there's an area in, did you say Africa that they're doing a a book study on your book? That's, that's really intriguing. That's pretty cool. Tell us about that. I was telling you beforehand that it's weird because you never know. It's like your podcast. You never know who all is, you know, going to be influenced by your work. And, um, I, I was talking this morning with somebody because there's a cohort now in South Africa that is reading my book and doing a book study and that I'm interacting with. And, and it's like, you know, a whole school of people that I've never met that I don't know. I, I don't know a single person in South Africa. And, and that's just incredible, you know? And yeah, it's just, it, it's such a gift to be able to, to know that you're influencing people around the world. It is. And again, congratulations with that and, and on the success of, of everything from the podcasts to now the book. So um, good luck with that. And uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for coming on. And, uh, you know, no matter what schools look, will look like when we go back in August and September, I know that uh, you as a counselor and as an educator are going to do all you can do. And, and I'm urging everyone listening to do all that you can do as well to help build up that culture in your school. Hans, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. All right. Good stuff. <laughs>